Good evening and welcome to uh, the State of the City Address here in the City of Athens. I'm Mayor Steve Patterson. Uh, also, uh, I have with me all of the department heads for the sundry different departments here in the City of Athens. So um, thank you and welcome. As we go through the State of the City Address, um, at the end, we will have ample time for questions or comments that individuals may have. And what we will do is field those on to the, the most appropriate department to answer the question or that I will answer it myself. Uh, it is quite the honor to be serving all of you as the mayor for the city of Athens in my second term, and even more so to be doing it during such an a intensely challenging time um, being the mayor of the city of Athens during a major pandemic, global pandemic. Um, one of the things I would like to do is basically get into uh, some of the different groups uh, or boards and commissions that I serve on as mayor. And I do that just to kind of start with from a starting point to show the level of engagement that um, I have taken on as your mayor. Uh, and making sure that I am engaging as best I can within the city of Athens, but also engaging on the state and on the national stage. Uh, here you see a list of, of different organizations that I am either a board member uh, or more recently, I was appointed or voted on by my peers to be the chair for the Mayor's Partnership for Progress uh, also have been appointed as the chair for the National League of Cities University Communities Council. Uh, and I'm on the executive board as treasurer for the International Town Gown Association. Um, the, the NLC University Communities Council and the International Town Gown Association, as the names imply, are uh, boards or, or councils um, or associations that are um, of peers, like peers to the city of Athens, um, to where they are cities that, or villages that have institutions of higher education, uh, which has been a great platform for which to exchange challenges that we're experiencing, but as well coming up with solutions. Um, and it never hurts to be able to exchange ideas at that level, steal ideas, whatever you want to call it, uh, to, to further improve but also to show camaraderie that we're all in this together, especially now during a pandemic. Also serve on a couple different boards at Buckeye Hills uh, Regional Council on the Executive Committee, but also on the Appalachian Development Corporation Board of Directors. Uh, and you can see there's several other things that I engage in. Uh, and most recently with the National League of Cities, I've been appointed to the Information Technology and Communications Advisory Council, which is advisory to all of NLC when it comes to things like broadband um, or other information technology or communications issues as we're continually pushing forward, in particular with rural broadband to make sure that places like Athens and Athens County aren't further falling behind, especially under a pandemic when we know that we have great need for being able to um, have effective education delivery, um, K through 12, as well as higher ed, or telehealth uh, with their healthcare system to make sure that, that we are able to provide not only in the city of Athens, but throughout Athens County and again, other places that are truly experiencing broadband desert. So my role will be to, to be that voice for Athens, uh, but to be the voice for Athens County and rural southeastern Ohio when it comes to uh, such a great need, uh, especially now. Some of the city challenges uh, and successes, I don't want to couch everything as a challenge, although there are lots of them. We've also had a lot of successes. To start with, um, the biggest challenge, as I indicated in my intro, is the, the pandemic, hands down. Uh, one of the most challenging things that, that uh, we have all, all collectively have had to um, find our way through um, in dealing with that. Uh, and in particular, when we had the mass exodus of students here at Ohio Uni University back in March, 
um, in July when I had heard that cities like like Dayton and Columbus uh, and others were creating ordinances or policies to where they um, were requiring people to wear face coverings when out in public um, or entering into businesses that were open to the public. Um, when I found out about that on July 2nd, I immediately started working with city council and roughly 14 days later, we had an ordinance in place requiring people to wear face coverings. It's always a good reminder that that ordinance is and uh, was and still is a complaint-based ordinance to where people, if, if you identify or see people who are not properly covering up, um, that they are to notify the police department at the non-emergency number, which is 592-3313, report it, uh, and the police department will certainly uh, investigate and deal with that issue uh, as those calls come in. Uh, it's always good to remind people as well that there is the uh, um, um, liquor inspection unit um, that can address establishments that have liquor permits. If things are inappropriately being done within that establishment, uh, lack of face coverings or large gatherings of people, if they feel that they, they, they're exceeding what their capacity should be, under COVID-19, that they will deal with that as well as BWC has a team that will go out if people feel that there are businesses that are uh, not uh, upholding the face covering to where people entering into an establishment open to the public needs to, that people need to be covered up. We do have a number of, of uh, businesses. Uh, I would say the majority of the businesses in the city of Athens are doing the best they can and upholding that particular uh, regulation uh, as we move forward. We also received about $1.5 million in CARES Act funding. Um, with that, we certainly at the beginning were able to purchase a lot of personal protection, protective equipment. We uh, also were able to create two grants that we administered to the Hawking Athens Perry Community Action. One of them was for housing um, mortgage and rent relief for people who were impacted by COVID-19 and struggling with being able to pay rent or mortgage. The other grant was for utility relief because we knew there were a lot of people who were being challenged either due to being laid off um, or having to pull more jobs just to make ends meet uh, because you were laid off. Uh, and having different challenges within your own household. So we created that grant. We had uh, several individuals take advantage of, of both of those funding mechanisms that were managed through the uh, Hawking Athens Perry Community Action Group. Um, we were also able to use um, a large amount of that money for safety services uh, for, for payroll. Um, and so we ended up going through that mechanism, which was authorized by um, uh, the Department of Justice as well uh, uh, as some of the state agencies saying, yes, this is something that you can actually do with the CARES Act money that you have received. Uh, another big challenge was the 2020 census. Uh, when we did experience the, the mass exodus of students which occurred in the March timeframe, right away we knew we are really gonna struggle with being able to capture the students who have left. Um, and because we had no idea how long the, the students would, would not, how long it was gonna take for them to return. Uh, the other issue that we were experiencing, and it wasn't just Athens, this is every city in, in the nation and village and borough, is that the goalposts seem to keep moving in terms of what are the deadlines for when the enumeration process would end. Um, I know that uh, city planner Paul Logue worked very hard, um, both in terms of information gathering, but also working with his one of his interns, actually several people, um, but uh, his intern Lauren was at the fore as well to figure out ways in which we could could get the best count possible. We worked with landlords. Uh, we were told through the Census Bureau that we could use 
uh, the, um, the landlords and any information that they could provide to us, and that could help with our count. We worked with Ohio University very closely, in particular the registrar's office, to be able to get addresses and uh, uh, provide, possibly provide in a different way of looking at group quarter enumeration, um, using the registrar's data to kind of treat it as a group quarter enumeration process. We did a lot. Um, unfortunately, I think we're still going to see several areas, several of the census tracts in the city of Athens to where um, we may have a lower than 2010 um, self-response rate in those particular census tracts. We haven't seen that data yet. Nothing has been rolled out in terms of what the counts look like. I just want to push that out there because there are things like the community development block grants, uh, the school systems. There's a lot of different entities, jobs and family services, that all rely on the allocation that comes through a complete count. Uh, so we're, we're uh, patiently waiting to see what those numbers look like and to see whether or not we may have to challenge um, our underreporting if we find that we did do see significant underreporting in the city of Athens. The other side of that is if we do see that we um, exceed the 25,000 citizen threshold, we're going to have a different um, uh, situation on our hands, which is an interesting one, that we may have to do some city redistricting, because if we go beyond 25,000, we would have to create a fifth ward and a fourth at-large seat. Uh, but again, that's going to be predicated on seeing what those numbers look like in terms of us exceeding 25,000. So more to come on that. Back in, in June, when Council Member Sarah Grace came out with racism as a public health emergency, her resolution in there was language about standing up a task force to look into policy, city code, and a number of different things related to systemic racism here in the city of Athens. Um, we worked on framing a task force uh, over the past several months, uh, and we are currently working closely with the Racial Equity Coalition, which is a group um, that has come together uh, in conjunction with the Athens County Foundation and having them kind of come together and creating um, this larger task force, at least the task force charter that, that Chief Tom Pyle, uh, Council President Chris Nisley and I put together, fleshed it out, and now working with that group to really get this going to where we will look at all city policies, we'll look at city ordinances. Uh, we will also be looking at things like, um, are there discriminatory property deeds out there that still exist? Um, and what are some ways that we can move forward to, to tear down that level of systemic racism to where there could be discriminatory language in a property deed? Uh, so more to come on that as that uh, the Racial Equity Coalition and the task force um, framework all come together as they are as I speak right now to you. Uh, the city was successful in renewing our street rehabilitation levy. So thank you, citizens of Athens. That was great because that is one of the mechanisms that we use for, um, for some of the things that you have all already experienced here in the city of Athens, mo no most notably things like the Richland Avenue pedestrian passageway, which which Director Jessica Dine is going to speak to um, as she gets into her portion with engineering and public work works items, but also um, other projects that are um, either being planned as we speak uh, or, or soon to be planned, uh, designed for future projects, as example being the uh, Stimson Avenue project, which is underway right now, or the West Union Street Improvement the Uptown Street Improvement, which will be a 2023-2024 project moving forward with Washington Street and State Street between Congress and College, getting a facelift much like you've all experienced on West Union. Um, other city infrastructure projects that are underway uh, or completed, the Athens Northwest Bike Path or Bikeway Spur 
uh, which is a, a beautiful addition to our many miles of bikeability, um, dedicated pedestrian cycling pathways throughout the city. Uh, this is a connector that goes basically from Armitage Road on up to University Estates. Um, trust me, because I watched uh, Director Adine work through this. This was a challenging project um, and has been a challenging project for quite some time. But I believe we uh, delivered, uh, Director Adine and her team delivered on a, a, a great, great product for the city of Athens. Um, fiber conduit. Um, we've had this in plan and underway for years, uh, early 2000s, where we were putting conduit in the ground with the thought that in the future we could, could thread this with fiber and fiberize city buildings, but also possibly use it for some other uh, economic development uh, as an economic development tool in the future. Um, the most recent is a fiber conduit that runs all the way from the Richland Avenue roundabout out to Armitage Road, um, which cuts through a fair amount of the city from, from east to west. Uh, and so hopefully in the future, we'll be able to start deploying fiber through some of that conduit. Uh, I already mentioned the West Union Street project, as well as the Uptown Street Improvement Project. So these are, again, things for uh, all of us to, to look forward to as we continue on 2021 and beyond. Um, that's what I've got at this point in time. Again, if you have questions, please um, save them to the Q&A time, uh, time frame. Uh, and I'm gonna turn it over to the Interim Service Safety Director, Chief Tom Pyle. Thank you, Mayor. I'll be very brief. Um, for those of you in attendance or watching uh, on the open broadcast and who aren't aware, um, I'm your chief of police, have been since uh, 2011. And uh, in March of last year, uh, partially planned, uh, Director Andy Stone, uh, Service Safety Director Andy Stone, uh, left to go active duty for the National Guard for the state of Ohio. Uh, until sometime later this year. And we had made plans for me to step in as interim service safety director. So I've been functioning in that position for the mayor since March, uh, right about the time the, the pandemic uh, struck. Um, I, most would think that would have been challenging. It really has, hasn't has been uh, too bad, given uh, the consider, you know, all things considered. And I would attribute that uh, mostly to the people that you're watching on the screen. The mayor has assembled a, an absolute tremendous staff of department heads and department figures who really know their stuff. There's not a weak link uh, in the chain, quite frankly, and they're all experts in their field. And you're going to hear from them uh, very briefly tonight. And uh, I would just say to them very, very publicly, thank you. This has not been the worst job on the face of the planet during a pandemic. And uh, um, I really mean that from the bottom of my heart. A few things that I have been focused on before I turn it over to them. Um, you know, the mayor asked, tasked, uh, asked me and tasked me with uh, monitoring our CARES Act funding. Uh, those of you that don't know, the city received about $1.3 million and some change uh, for federal CARES Act money. And uh, we're happy to report uh, that as of December 31st, we utilized every dime of that money. Uh, none of it went to waste. Um, and then uh, we, we closed uh, the FOP contract very recently with council's approval. And uh, uh, I would say the city has a very good contract with their police union for the next three years. Um, most of what I've spent my time with is helping the various department heads alter or maintain their, their normal operations or, or uh, work with you know, acceptable workarounds um, and work stoppages and things like that that they had to do. Uh, get done through the pandemic. Um, we had a, a major leadership change at the department head level with the uh, engineering and public works, and I, I assisted with that process. And I'm happy that Jessica Dine is serving as the interim director down there, and she's doing a terrific job, and you'll hear from her uh, later. And then uh, my ongoing job into 2021 is really just supporting what we have in place uh, and certainly assisting with Director Stone's return when he's back in the States. 
um, some of the 2021 goals that we have uh, that the mayor's established for us that I'm assisting with is, you know, we, we established a hiring uh, moratorium for, I think that's the right word, um, for hiring freeze. Um, once the pandemic struck, uh, being able rather easily to predict uh, economic crisis that would come with something like that. And uh, so we have a ton of vacant positions in the city that we haven't filled. And we're slowly going through those with human resources and with council uh, and the auditor's office, uh, making sure our, all of our I's are dotted and T's and crossed and that the city can afford the positions that we're filling. Um, and and that, that is an ongoing thing. We've got about 15 to 19 vacancies in the city. And, and there is a work slowdown with that kind of a staffing shortage. And so we're balancing uh, work slowdowns with uh, with obvious needs and and the economic concerns of it. Um, very recently, we had uh, you know a power outage on Friday, and that served as a reminder uh, that, that we need a new generator system here at City Hall and over in the Law Administration Building. However, that had already been queued up uh, about a month ago. We started talking about that again, so uh, that I guess Friday's power outage just served as a strong reminder that that we need to get that done. Um, so I expect that we'll we'll make that investment and get a power system back up here at, at City Hall very quickly. Um, we're also uh, taking some money that we received from Bureau of Workers Comp that's earmarked for safety, and we'll be uh, uh, sending that out to the various departments. But one of the the earmarks that we've already put on it was uh, is for a, to start a new key code uh, access system for the entire city. Uh, starting with two of the buildings uptown. Um, and so we're looking for contractors and, and doing our research to uh, come up with the best option for uh, City Hall and law administration updates. And this, we want uh, security updates with the key code system. This is something that we want to be able to take out to all the departments uh, so that it's a unified system throughout all the, the various physical plants that we have throughout the city. Um, so that's coming. And then, like I mentioned, uh, uh, Service Safety Director Andy Stone likely to return in June or July of this year, and then I will return full-time to the police department. And a special thank you to Captain Ralph Harvey. Uh, even though I've maintained the title of chief of police, that is really a Captain Harvey who has taken on the day-to-day -day operations at the police department. And uh, um, that's not an easy job over there either, uh, given the times. And and uh, he's done a, a, a just a fine job with it. And you'll hear from him on police operations because he's going to prevent uh, present as the department head for the police department. So uh, that's essentially it from me. So I'm going to turn it over to our human resources director, Ron Lucas, and I'm going to run the slideshow from here on out. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. So focusing on uh, the accomplishments of 2020 from a human resources standpoint, I started in the position in December of 2019. And one of the, two of the urgent things that we recognized as a HR department was uh, organization and um, access, accessibility to uh, human resource files and things of that nature. So the first major accomplishment that we were able to do before the pandemic hit was to uh, create a new organizational structure for our uh, personnel files and medical files. So we separated those out and um, got everything into one format for both the personnel and medical side. Um, so that was very, very helpful and it continues to be helpful. Um, next slide, please. Um, with the human resources software that we chose, uh, we were using a software called Paychex, but we weren't using it to its full, um, full capability. So we did a significant amount of research, uh, we being uh, Amy Brink and I, and I, and um, were able to um, contract out with a company called Bamboo HR. Uh, this is something that's been um, bought into by the staff. It's uh, very, very nice to see people that typically do not want anything to do with a computer uh, end up asking how to get access on a mobile app because of the ease of use and having uh, HR capabilities at their fingertips. So we continue to get better with that. And, uh, the, the third big focus of 2020 was our COVID-19 response. Um, we did a lot with, uh, 
making sure that we were following the family first coronavirus response act. There were a lot of technicalities to that and that we had to research and also creating policy for, um, for the worker uh, in terms of knowing what they needed to do whenever themselves or someone in their family or what would happen if they were contacting it with uh, a friend or anything of that nature. And those policies needed to be dynamic, um, a lot of updating to that, and those continue to need to be updated. So that was very, um, very uh, interesting in terms of what we were able to learn um, not only about the pandemic, but organic policy. Uh, 2021 goals um, continue with our implementation of bamboo. Um, Chief alluded to the number of um, positions that we have available. We're actually doing a lot of test development now, uh, particularly for new positions that have been added by the staffing ordinance. Um, I, we would like to develop a true employee wellness program, and I would like to do something with Bamboo HR and extend that to some other software capabilities that tie into that. Um, weren't a, was, was not able to attend as much training as I would have liked in 2020, um, hoping to be able to expand upon that in 2021, um, both with the Society of Human Resource Management and Prior Plus. And uh, just being a constant service to our staff, um, we want to make sure that we have HR um, being easily accessible to all our staff. So thank you. All right. I'll introduce Paul Logue, our city planner. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you, Chief Powell, for the opportunity to speak this evening and Mayor Patterson for the same. Uh, I want to just talk about a couple of the highlights from 2020. Uh, my primary highlight from 2020 was completing uh, working with Mayor Patterson and City Council to get uh, an updated version of our, uh, an updated comprehensive plan completed for the City of Athens. This was a project that was about three years in the works uh, and is an update of what we uh, was last completed almost um, 15 years ago. Uh, the comprehensive plan has uh, a series of guiding principles as well as looks at um, topics, uh, neighborhoods, and um, corridors of the city. Um, if anybody's interested in seeing that, by all means, reach out to me. I'll send you a link. It's available on the city's website as well from uh, if you do a Google search. Uh, other key accomplishments from last year, uh, another one that's been in the works for decades on slide two there, um, uh, establishing a historic preservation district for um, uh, uptown Athens to provide uh, guidelines to make sure that uh, construction, rehabilita rehabilitation, and new new uh, new buildings in the Uptown District uh, fit within the historic character of that, that area. Uh, also in the historic preservation uh, realm, we've been working closely with uh, the Mount Zion Preservation Society, the city, uh, well, I wrote a grant on behalf of the city for uh, Mount Zion through uh, Ohio History Connections Certified Local Government Grant Program, uh, and which helped to uh, hire an architect to do design uh, interior spaces for the building to make sure that what uses uh, they want to do in there can fit in that building. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, other major things from 2020, uh, we've been working a lot with disabilities planning with the city's sustainability or city's disabilities commission, ongoing sus sustainability planning, uh, ridges preservation efforts. There's been some concerns about building failures up there, roof failures, excuse me. And so uh, myself and many others that we've been working to uh, assist university with uh, solving that problem. Also, economic development, uh, helping Mayor Patterson and uptown business and property owners to establish a special improvement district and uh, downtown redevelopment district. Uh, currently working with city council and Mayor Patterson on that for the Union Street corridor. And then census outreach uh, through the Get Out the Count program uh, that myself and uh, key, key interns, including uh, Lauren Connor, were uh, instrumental in helping. For 2021, uh, goals include a city code review, continuing uh, work on diversity, uh, equity, and inclusion programs for the city, uh, updating our sustainability plan, begin uh, comprehensive plan implementation, and continuing disabilities planning. Thank you. That is all. All right. I'll introduce our Deputy Service Safety Director, uh, Andrew Chickie, with an apostrophe there. Yeah. It's, it says it right on the screen there for everyone. Uh, thank you uh, for 
give me a chance to, to explain a few of the things that we have going on. Uh, many of the things that I do are behind the scenes, uh, but they're vitally important to the general operations and the infrastructure of the city. Uh, a lot of it's the stuff that doesn't necessarily fit really well with a specific department. Uh, so a few of those items that I want to highlight. The first one is uh, we had the opportunity to, um, to install a, an EV fast charge station. It's the first one in Southeast Ohio. It's at the city pool. We installed that in March, right before the onset of, uh, of COVID and the lockdown, unfortunately. Uh, but we see this as a, as an important way to, uh, to help bring people through Athens to make this part of a corridor as they're connecting from Columbus, Ohio, down to West Virginia um, through, through that corridor. So it's, it's a really important thing that I think is a, a good starter uh, as being a stop economically. Uh, the second uh, item, it is COVID related, but we wanted to think of this uh, a more long-term for the uptown beautification of the city was uh, we worked on developing an uptown outdoor seating program um, easier known as a parklet. And the example, the, the picture there is from Brennan's. Uh, the mayor, when we were discussing uh, what we can do for the Uptown businesses with the Athens Uptown Business Association, his charge was to get creative. And we spent a, a good deal of time researching different ways that we could uh, find a balance between providing opportunities and maintaining traffic flow and considering all of these other um, options for the uptown area on a long-term basis. There were some short-term fixes that we considered, but the idea was really to think long-term. And I thank uh, Paul Logue for assisting and in, in working through that. Uh, some other projects that we're, we're working on actively, uh, we entered into an agreement with Third Sun Solar to develop a solar array on the east side of Athens. This project is to uh, serve all of the city infrastructure. We have the wastewater treatment plant, we have the Athens Community Center, uh, and, and some other structures along the east side that we want to power with solar. Uh, and it's a multi-fold project. Uh, it's in progress. We're hoping to, to kick things off later this year uh, in 2021, so it's, it's continuing. But part of that's uh, sustainability. Part of that is uh, thinking about uh, the environmental charge that we have uh, to consider climate change and uh, also our pollinators. So we're working in all of these different things into this project, so it's, it's pretty involved. Um, other items that, were, that we worked on this past year included uh, updating the cemetery uh, standard operating procedures, uh, including GIS mapping, so that we can find information and, um, and really be good stewards of the records that we have. We've got you know, thousands and thousands of interments uh, in Athens, over 8,000 in the Union Street Cemetery, over 6,000 known at the West State Street Cemetery. And a lot of thanks for that work goes to Richard Linscott, uh, which is one of Paul Logue's interns from the past year, who was really helpful. I don't know anything about GIS, and it was, it was great to have uh, some assistance there. Um, some other projects we worked on were uh, upgrading, replacing our billing server through utilities billing, uh, which was a needed infrastructure upgrade that we, that we really needed to, to uh, improve, and also uh, replacing our heating system at the community center. And the next year, uh, over the next 12 months, uh, we wanna extend the outdoor seating program uh, in the Athens Uptown area. We've heard many businesses that have expressed interest. We want to uh, envision what the Uptown area can look like and make it pedestrian friendly, bicycle friendly, uh, really uh, be the, the starting point for the, the comprehensive plan that's, that's being rolled out uh, and, and making this one of those uh, touch points. Uh, the chief mentioned the, the backup generator and, and the needs with that, uh, the Eastside Solar Project. We're also working on uh, an Athens Farmer's Market I have listed here. It's been an ongoing conversation for 25 years uh, off and on, and it, it, it comes up and, and goes away and comes up again. But uh, we're at a really close point uh, with working with Athens Farmer's Market, along with the solar project to create a home uh, for the farmer's market. Uh, on the community center campus. Uh, it's a long time coming and we have some details to work out, but uh, we're in a pretty good place now. Uh, we've had a lot of discussions over the last 12 months uh, with uh, stakeholders in the farmer's market, uh, citizens, uh, and, and obviously uh, Third Sun Solar. 
And the last item uh, I have on here is utilities billing. Uh, we've been working on improvements uh, with that office. And one of those is uh, improving and implementing a credit card payment processing system. Uh, and that includes how we do our online bill pay, how we do our, our walk-up bill pay. Unfortunately, you know, due to COVID, we've been uh, closed to the public for, for walk-ins in the way that we typically have been. But we want to have the infrastructure in place to, um, to improve the customer service experience uh, when we're able to open things back up. Thank you, Andrew. Let me introduce our code director, David Riggs, to talk about code enforcement. Thanks, Chief uh, Mayor, for letting me speak tonight. Uh, 2020 was an interesting year, but uh, we did get some things accomplished. Um, one of the things that we did uh, was activated our online portal uh, for applications. So um, this was actually pushed forward. We had it in the pipeline, but it was pushed forward due to COVID. We were trying to make sure people were safe and we're still being able to access our department um, so <clears throat> we created a system that allow applicants to fill out the permits and to pay their fees online, improves our efficiency and actually reduces costs to the city. So that was a, that was a great accomplishment for, uh, for us. We also bid out and accepted a new, uh, three, a new three-year contract for our solid waste and recycling. Um, and, and this, uh, this year we started, uh, by adding a, uh, full-blown composting, uh, portion for our residents and that's uh, that's been very popular this bid actually had two bidders that uh, that uh, submitted bids for the project AR AHRC was the low bid but bids were really close so it means that the uh, that the contract documents were were pretty tight uh, which which was great um, as part of that we also updated our fees and corrected solid waste billing accounts this this started in July. Uh, contract started in July, and we had some increases in fees just to account to uh, for uh, making sure that we were uh, breaking even on our uh, on our solid waste billing. Um, as Paul Logue said, we established uh, a new uh, uh, permit for historical preservation. We've got the permit in place now and the program ready. So uh, uh, this we have a historical preserva uh, preservation board that oversees this process. And uh, the purpose, of course, is to preserve some of our historic downtown areas. Um, and then finally, uh, I updated permit forms and added application checklists uh, for our application submission. We, we knew that we were seeing people come back with only partial submissions. So I added an application checklist to all of our, uh, our permits so that uh, the, the permit applic uh, applicant would have everything they need um, included in that original submission that actually sped up the process and made it easier for people to uh, to get permits through our office um, for uh, goals for this year um, I'm really excited to generate a new uh, post COVID rental inspection schedule really looking forward to uh, to getting that up in operation um, we also plan on uh, Doing code updates for Title 23, there's some old language and that's the zoning code. In the zoning code and Title 21, minor lot splits uh, to meet the current rules and regulations. Uh, we also want to review the big bellies, uh, see if we can get a, a cost-effective solution as the contract is going to be up this year. Um, I plan on providing training and uh, education for zoning and building inspections so that we could look to see if the city of Athens uh, would ha would be feasible for the city of Athens to have a, uh, a building department. And then uh, we also are gonna look at improving our central site areas for recycling and solid waste collection. David, let me introduce our interim uh, director at in Engineering and Public Works and our assistant city engineer, Jessica Dine. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight. So major 2020 accomplishments included uh, repairing water and sewer lines and completing over 700 water and sewer work orders. The street crew completed over 400 work orders and oversaw the annual paving project while maintaining streets, guardrails, and ditches. Um, the water treatment plant produced an astonishing 833 million gallons of water and the wastewater treatment plant treated 807 million gallons of wastewater. Next slide, please. So one of our major projects completed in 2020 was the Richland Avenue Pedestrian Passageway Project. 
This created a grade separation for pedestrians and cyclists on Richland Avenue between West Green Drive and Bobcat Lane. Uh, funding for the project um, was provided by ODOT, the City of Athens, and Ohio University. Next slide, please. The major goal of 2021 is the construction of the Stimson Avenue project. Um, this project is currently under construction, as the mayor noted. It's, uh, the work limits are between State Street and Grant Street, and the improvements include utility replacements, uh, installation of decorative lighting, upgrading the existing traffic signals, installing uh, wider sidewalks and pedestrian improvements, and replacing the existing roadway. Next slide, please. Goals of uh, 2021 also include the completion of our dewatering uh, project. This project will be constructed at our wastewater treatment plant and includes installing equipment to um, make our wastewater treatment process more efficient. Next slide, please. The West Union Street project is currently under design. Um, the project will improve safety conditions, intersections, and accessibility on West Union Street. And this project spans from the bridge near 680, um, 681 to, to Schaefer Street. Next slide, please. And the City County Sewer Expansion Project. This project includes improving city sewer infrastructure to allow connection of the county sewer system. Next slide, please. And finally, the Uptown Area Improvements Project includes improving the safety uh, of the area for bicycles and pedestrians um, by adding standard amenities, looking um, for pavement marking upgrades and signal improvements as well. And the project location is State Street and Washington Street between College and Congress Street, and we expect design to, to begin this year. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. All right, let me introduce our Director of Arts, Parks, and Recreation, Terry Moore. Good evening, all. Uh, I'm happy to be here to talk about arts, parks, and recreation and share some of the highlights from the past year. Um, thank you to the mayor, city administration, and city council for your continued support at this unprecedented time. Um, and of course, other department heads and chief pile. Thank you. Uh, APR started the year with several plan improvements, facility improvements at Arts West and at the community center. Uh, the most significant being the uh, two new boilers. Andrew, Andrew mentioned that um, facilities operations took the lead on that and we're much, much appreciative there. Uh, operationally, I'd like to highlight the development of a COVID plan for all of our facilities, parks and users. This was necessary, necessary for safely mitigating for our patrons and reopening all facilities. Um, we had to revise policies, procedures, and waivers for programs and services offered. Uh, and despite some of the restrictions and requirements, we um, reopened and managed to offer new programs like Crafternoons at Arts West and Start Smart Sports programs and dance here at the community center. Uh, next slide. In February, the department uh, offered two well-attended uh, events those held uh, were the National Girls and Women in Sports Day and Healthy Hoops. We then shifted gears adapting during COVID uh, in partnership with PassionWorks to safely host uh, Honey for the Heart Parade, uh, Parade in Place uh, on Halloween. These events were huge success in the community. Um, next slide. In January of 2020, APR acquired lands. This includes cemeteries and uptown maintenance um, and landscaping, adding to the parks maintenance area of responsibilities. Uh, their accomplishments, including completing several projects, ranging from modifications of program areas, adding fields and courts uh, to replacing playground equipment, to the installation of 17 kiosks, uh, for the storybook trail at Sales Park. And on top of that, um, I think you can see listed our routine maintenance. Uh, this group never missed a beat. They were, they were the one unchanging uh, factor during COVID. 
In, um, in planning for the coming year, it's our objective to be project and program focused, uh, to offer programs and services that safely, uh, as safely as we can at all of our facilities and in our parks. There's a slide of tree planting and then one of our um, programs, uh, that's, that's the new look as, as far as uh, masking up during all of our programs. Next slide. In reviewing the goals, um, it's, uh, we'll, in reviewing 2021 goals, uh, up first would be completing the 2021 uh, master plan. That will be a five-year plan. Uh, I hope to have that go out to bid this first quarter of the year, ideally completing it within the year. Um, Next is branding and signage and wayfinding for all of our parks and facilities. That's been slated a couple years now. And I think with the launch of the new APR website and logo, um, it's time to move on that. So all of our city parks are um, uniformed and identifiable. Uh, art and public, public spaces. Uh, I'd like to continue with the art bench project, uh, gallery installation, um, at the Athens Community Center, uh, adding mural to the Community Center and uh, working with AMAC to add the mural uh, here on East State Street at the maintenance garage. And then establishing the 5013C for Friends of Arts, uh, Arts Parks and Recreation and a 5013C for Friends of Arts West. Um, this was something that uh, I started to work with the advisory board on last year, and I'm hopeful that we'll get that uh, in place uh, in the very new future. And then the, the big goal is to open our uh, facilities and parks safely and offer um, new programs and services at our facilities and in our parks. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. Uh, let me introduce our Chief Information Officer, David Dudding, who's going to talk about our uh, information technologies. Yes, thank you, Chief Pyle. Um, so we are the department kind of that's behind the scenes and uh, our responsibility is to keep the lights on, so to speak, in terms of uh, information, uh, infrastructure, communications, data, f files, um, since everything becomes computer-based anymore. Um, Looking back on, on the previous year or so, we've, uh, we did a major review of our phone system, existing phone system, and, and uh, discovered some, some uh, significant savings in terms of uh, eliminating a, a, a number of lines, uh, analog lines, and, um, which, which was a savings in and of itself. But then we also moved to a third-party service provider that is a a bulk provider of of service that uh, you know reduce our costs. So there was there was a this was a good thing. Um, um, realize savings. So uh, we've uh, with COVID uh, we were pressed more and more to uh, move uh, and, and provide access for remote access for for staff working um, from home and, and and other sites. This was. Uh, Somewhat of a challenge um, getting everybody going and maintaining services, but uh, 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 it proved very beneficial in, in, in uh, keep, keeping the lights on, so to speak. You know. uh, we've had some upgrades in some of our hardware in terms of uh, simply uh, aging and, and uh, especially in our, our uh, um, email system and our, our microwave backbone. This certainly ties into uh, um, the discussion that you heard about fiber and conduit throughout the city. Um, uh, there is some assistance with APD and the auditor with their new servers. Both the auditor servers both replaced uh, um, the billing system and some of their uh, their internal taxing and, and services. So moving on, our biggest push now with our aging infrastructure is to see, as, as mentioned, uh, fiber you know, implemented more and more throughout the city. Um, the mayor mentioned some conduit already in place. Um, there is a new project. Many probably see this uh, from 
uh, the uh, west end of State Street uh, all the way to the end of Mill Street and over to Stimson that uh, the city will have conduit also available. And, and this uh, initial phase will we'll, uh, work to uh, bring Arts West online, um, Arts West online to uh, um, provide opportunity for them to do uh, a bit more uh, um, uh, programming. Um, I think uh, the government channel is involved with this also. So, and and from that growth, you know, we want to design this. We're working with some a, a company potentially that uh, is looking to uh, also provide um, internet services within the city to uh, uh, design a, a larger picture of, of where the fiber goes to uh, bypass our, our microwave system. So. Um, again, Arts West uh, has been a big focus. Um, I've got a, a project relocating their current uh, communication system, networking services, to a a closet that will be dedicated and, and rerunning and, and providing better uh, internet services within within the facility itself. Um, another big push we've 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 had on our on our stove uh, for a while, so to speak, is is uh, the police virtual environment where their servers are running is to get this operationally moved over to uh, newer hardware in the city, uh, maintaining maintaining the secure uh, uh, connections to their stuff. So um, again, that, that is a push. Um, and renewing some of our, again, our city firewalls, renewing some of our aging aging hardware uh, that that uh, currently is is out for quote and uh, hopefully that will happen this year thank you thank you david uh chief reimer is with us tonight but i'm not sure he's in a position to go over your slides can you see the slides from where you are bob yes i can sir all right well i'll introduce you fire chief bob reimer all right thank you uh different environment here i'll try to make this quick uh 2020 accomplishments of course with everybody else we had some things that were uh, thrown in the wrench in the work so to speak due to covid uh we did have our uh, five-year iso rating and iso's insurance services office and what that does they provide a grade for every fire department in the u.s and with that grade homeowners insurance rates are determined we are still at a four but we're slightly higher than what we were uh the largest thing there was um, the need for staffing uh training center uh, so we are currently working on that. Uh, we did have a cross-training exercise, vehicle machinery rescue technician class that was provided by uh, Ohio EMA grant. Uh, 17 firefighters throughout the region, four departments were trained. Next slide. And we did have, uh, we hired two firefighters to be started right at the very beginning of the year. Uh, both those have successfully passed probation. Uh, we also had one firefighter retire and another one uh, leave service and go to another department. So we have two positions now that we're in the process of uh, working out and trying to hire for. Um, other accomplishments, two grants we received. One was for $7,500 by Enbridge. We used that to purchase four sets of water rescue gear. Uh, and that was uh, PFDs, which are flotation devices, suits, and the works. And $30,000 for the training grant, which you just I just discussed, and I showed you uh, pictures of what we use that for, as well as uh, replace some out-of-age equipment. Uh, overall call volume was down 30%. A lot of this was due to things shutting down and the, the university being shut down and the students not here. OU responses decreased from 40% of our calls to the university to only 20%. Fire loss was cut more than half. Elevator rescues uh, decreased from 48 to 16. Auto accidents were down also. Uh, we expanded our social media outreach for fire prevention. Uh, a lot of that had to do with since these schools were doing everything through Zoom, we decided to take that on. We created a YouTube channel. I invite you to uh, visit our Facebook page and get some more information on that. You see a picture there. We have a new pumper that arrived this year, as well as a, a new command vehicle. And on the left there, the uh, Athens Bicycle Club purchased a Terra Tamer, which is that wheel underneath the Stokes. And that's going to enable us to help uh, do some rescues on the trail system, such as Bailey's, which we're working on. 2021 goals, cross-training with neighboring agencies so we can prepare for the Bailey's trail response, more regional training, 
I get six firefighters for our swift water uh, tech class, which will make them rescue swimmers. Concentrate more on business inspections, which we uh, put to the side due to everything closed down. And then fill the two firefighter open positions. And then we're going to look into some uh, funding and uh, replace a station that's been needed for some time. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Reimer, for taking the time to log on. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Uh, all right. Batting cleanup, as he would like to say, will be our uh, captain of police, Ralph Harvey. Thanks, Chief. And thanks for the kind words at the beginning of the, this uh, presentation. And thanks, Mayor, for the chance to be here and talk about the police department. It's hard to sum up what we've done in, in two minutes, but... Uh, as you can see there, I like to I like to talk about things people don't think about, life-saving actions. The reason we can do this uh, is the officers are on patrol and they carry tourniquets. Each cruiser has an AED in it. We have wound kits, we have first aid equipment, and we can often be there first to assist and to assist EMS. Um, next slide, please. The other thing that we did this year, once again, is was shop with a cop. It was a little different this year. We actually had to limit a lot of it due to COVID. We didn't have a big party or wrapping or anything like that. The extended families really couldn't be there, but we were still able to uh, in-house do a fundraiser that created, uh, that added to this so we could, we could provide this to more kids. Next slide, thank you. Uh, the next thing is the things you see there, drug take back this gets a lot of prescription meds off out of houses where they can be accidentally ingested or stolen or abused. And as you can see our statistics there, those include a lot of felonies. Um, we have 25 felonies currently in process, and that includes uh, catalytic converter thefts, mail thefts, uh, businesses were burglarized and we caught the individual that was doing one of those in the act. And as well as a, uh, four were charged in connection with a manslaughter case. And uh, next slide, please. Some things we want to do this year in 21. Uh, at late last year, we, we got funded to add a, a new base radio system. And as you can see there, uh, we're going to have officers attending a series of trainings. The lieutenants and myself and the chief were able to do some online, but it'll be more beneficial to the officers to be in person once we can do that. Um, we also are going to be working on building out the IPS meter system through parking enforcement this year and hopefully hiring some officers to replace, as it says, uh, people that are retiring. So thank you. Uh, thank you all uh, for being here. Thank you, Captain. I'll turn it back over to the mayor, sir. Thank you, Chief. And as you've all heard, um, you know, we've got, I have an outstanding team uh, on the administration front in the city of Athens. Um, I'm proud of all of them. They've been doing a lot under some, some incredibly challenging times. And uh, as you can see, the, the city really didn't slow down. Uh, we, we can't. Um, we, we got a lot accomplished in 2020. We have a lot more to accomplish in 2021 and beyond, as you Again, I've just heard. Uh, I would like to, to mention, and this is brand new, is that uh, the city, um, you, you can now go to uh, the Apple's, Apple App Store or Google Play and find the Athens, Ohio City Source. Um, you know, this new app, again, is available on those platforms, easy to get to. And these platforms are great. This platform is great for uh, reporting city issues. Uh, from anywhere concerning city code, uh, engineering and public works, uh, parks and rec, and a whole lot more. Um, so again, you can easily search this where you couldn't, uh, or it was difficult in the past, but now you can find them easily on the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. Um, I am going to open this up now for attendees to ask any questions that they may have about anything that was presented or anything that was not presented today at the 2021 State of the City Address. I know I have uh, Scott 
Thompson and Ryan Schwarzkopf, Ryan Schwarzkopf in the, the government channel, they're, they're looking at these things, uh, looking at any questions that somebody might have dropped in the chat. No questions have come through at this time, Mayor. Thank you, Ryan. Um, at that point, at this point, I guess then um, I would like to, again, thank all of you who are watching this evening. I also want to thank, again, my outstanding staff for all the hard work that you have done and continue to do. Uh, you're truly amazing individuals, you know, uh, operating, as I said, under a pandemic and as civil servants. We're here to serve the public. That is our job. Um, and I uh, know that my staff does just that and then some. So thanks for tuning in. And uh, please feel free to reach out to any of my departments or to myself in the mayor's office. Again, if you have any questions or need any updates for things going on in the city, stay safe, social distance, wear a mask. Uh, and uh, 